Hi everyone, so now we're ready to put everything um, in practice in terms of writing the electron configuration and so I'm going to use an example of carbon here to illustrate the you know different ways you can actually write electron configuration. So carbon, if you look up the periodic table, has a atomic number of six, which means that it also has six electrons in order to balance out the protons. And so there's several ways to write the electron configuration and I'm writing this as different methods of writing the electron configuration. So method one would be to use an energy diagram which looks like this one here with all the uh, boxes representing the different orbitals you can have for each uh, type. Okay, so of course in an energy diagram as you remember the lowest orbital uh, uh, the lowest position, I should say, is always the most stable position. And in this case, the most stable position we know is our 1s orbital. So we go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, and so on. And as you can see, the way they arrange this is that the s orbital is always the leftmost uh, position, and then followed by the p orbital next to them, and then followed by the d orbital. And if you have the f orbital, it would have been right here. For carbon, we have six electrons, so we're going to start by filling it one uh, at a time with the um, uh, lowest orbital first, and then we put one and two, and that fills up the first uh, orbital. That you can't have more than two orbitals in their opposite spins, I mean, two electrons in an orbital in their opposite spins. So then you go on to the second one, which is the 2s orbital and then you put two electrons here again opposite spins no more than two electrons and then afterwards you go to the 2p orbital and there's three degenerate orbitals in 2p and we have two electrons left to fill in because we have six total so then we just put two here each one in a in a separate orbital because of Hunt's rule okay remember so that's that's one method of doing this is to actually draw the energy diagram and uh, put in our electron as these arrows. Method two is probably the one that you've seen before. This is often called a box diagram. Um, again, it's sort of the same like this, except that it's the energy diagram is not illustrated. Uh, the way we interpret this is that the energy uh, of the orbital goes from lowest on the left side to highest on the right side. So that's why you're writing it left to right, basically. And as you can see here, uh, it's basically the same as this one, 1s, uh, two electrons in the 1x, uh, 1s orbital, two electrons in the 2s orbital, and then the 2p orbital, because they're all degenerate, um, we go 1 and 1 here. Method 3 is to use the uh, writing to just illustrate this. And this is the one that I talked about in the previous video, where we basically, it's a shorthand notation for the these hard three uh, hydrogen like orbitals the multiplication of these orbitals together so then for something like carbon you would say 1s2 and really again that means that you're multiplying the uh, wave function of 1s uh, for electron 1 times the wave function of 1s for electron 2 so that's that's how you get the 1s2 there and then 2s2 same procedure and then 2p2 as, as well okay so this is also the one that I think you're very uh, probably used to seeing uh, in prior chemistry courses. And I'm going to mention a fourth method here. And the fourth method has to do with using a noble, ca noble gas as a shortcut. And we'll talk about this again uh, later on, but I want to point out uh, this rule number three here first to, before we go back to that noble gas con configuration. The core electron <coughs> that you have um, the core electron configuration, because the core electrons are located closer to nucleus, they're usually not reactive. They're not the electrons that are involved in uh, making chemical bonds or reacting with other species. So as a result, the core electrons are often represented as just a noble gas configuration with the core electron being the closest noble gas to that number. Okay. So then what you see is in the case of um, carbon, if I, I, I draw this out to highlight the valence versus the core electron, so the valence electron is actually these guys right here, right? These 2s and 2p um, orbitals, they're both located in outermost shell, which is n equals 2 for a carbon in this case. So all the four electrons in, these, in this uh, 
n equals 2 shell is considered the valence electron for carbon which means that this is the core electrons now obviously if you have bigger elements then you have a lot more core electrons but in this case there's only two core electrons there's four valence electrons so the core electrons can be represented as a noble gas that has that same configuration and the uh, noble gas with configuration 1s2 is helium so we can write this as helium with the square brackets around them and then 2s2 and 2p2 so you can see that it's basically the same like this except that the 1s2 is uh, change into writing just helium now if you have 10 electrons for example in your core electrons you would write neon and then the valence electron configuration the valence electron is important to write out because the valence electrons are the ones that are furthest away from the nucleus and so they're the most easily lost uh, in reactions or shared with other compound uh, other elements in a reaction or forming chemical bonds so that's why we always write out the valence electrons I want to point out a couple more uh, additional guidelines you can use when writing electron configuration um, from the periodic table. When you look at the periodic table, just remember that the period in the periodic table, which is the rows that you have in the periodic table, corresponds to the principal quantum number. So if you look at uh, a periodic table that looks like this, this is the first period, this is the second period, this is the third period element, fourth period, etc five and so on but each one of this really corresponds to the principal quantum number so in this is n equals one this is n equals two n equals three uh, etc okay n equals four now what useful in that is that it helps you determine what uh, the starting uh, element will be because this is what we refer to as the uh, s block so I'm going to mention that in the second second rule here the second guideline which is that elements in the periodic table can be grouped by the orbital where their last valence electron resides in. So for example, if an element belongs in the P block, what we mean by that is that its last valence electron is in a P orbital. Uh, so the idea of the blocks are illustrated here in this simplified version of the periodic table. Basically, the first two groups of elements are what we call the s-block elements because their valence electrons are in s-orbitals. This one is called the p-block elements because their valence electron are in a p-orbital, the last of their valence electron are in p-orbitals. Uh, we just did an example of this, which is carbon, and carbon is located somewhere here. Um, and carbon, of course, has uh, the last... Uh, valence electron in carbon the, with the configuration we just did remember earlier was in the p orbital so that's why carbon belongs in the p block and then you have this transition metal region right here all of their electrons are in the d block and if you remember that uh, the periodic table is organized in a way that there's actually a, a series of seven uh, 14 elements here between this element and that element and between this and that element but these four 14 elements actually all belong in the F block so usually they're written at the bottom of the of the main periodic table and the top row is called the lanthanides the bottom row is called the actinides but all of these elements have their last um, electrons in the F orbital so to make it clear you can also look at this periodic table where all the elements are listed there and you can see here are my s s block elements here's my p block elements here's my d block elements and here's my f block elements and what's useful about this if you know this and you know the period representing the principal quantum number you can pretty much write any kind of configuration you want because you'll know for example if i have an element like uh zirconium i would say that it's going to end in period 5 here and this is the s block so this would be 5s2 for these guys and then you can write the noble gas corresponding to the previous one so it will be krypton and then 5s2 and then we have the 4d uh, um, and in this case there's 4d2 because there's only two elements right here so you can see that I can quickly determine how many electrons and what orbitals would be corresponding pretty much to the valence electrons of the uh, of my uh, element any element I want in the periodic table okay 
and so what we're going to do in the next example in the next video is to kind of go through an example using this this concept um, and and then we'll we'll discuss a little bit about um, exception you know some exception we'll see with transition metal in that next video as well